We are back with another series. Let's revise PYQs. This will benefit you in your upcoming exam. Let's look at the first question from this video. Question number 1. Please identify the maneuver being executed in the image provided. Your options are. And the correct answer is head tilt, chin lift. Here's the explanation. In a normal person, you open the airway by head tilt and chin lift. Okay? So after 30 compressions, you go for A, that is, you open the airway by head tail and chin lift. Question number two. Identify the mask in the image used for patients with COVID-19 infection. Your options are. And the correct answer is non-rebreathing mask. Here's the explanation. NRBM. What is NRBM? Non-rebreathing mask. Non-rebreathing mask. Basically, it's a combination of two things, guys. What combination? It is having a face mask as well as a non-rebreathing bag with it. Okay. With this, how much of the fluoride is given? 10 to 15 liters of fluoride is given. And what is the FiO2 that is being given over here? FiO2 is 65 to 95 percent. It will deliver 65 to 95 percent. Question number three. The image given below shows neuromuscular monitoring of the patient after anesthesia. What is the most commonly used nerve for monitoring? Your options are. And the correct answer is ulnar nerve. Here's the explanation. Neuromuscular on it. What's what's neuromuscular monitoring? Now, what is the neuromuscular monitoring? What guys remember? Sometimes if the patient is suffering with some hepatic problem or renal problem, or sometimes the patient is posted for a longer duration surgery. In those patients, you have to go for a neuromuscular monitoring that indicates. Your patient is adequately relaxed or not. The muscles are adequately relaxed or not. That dose of the drug that you have given is adequate or not to the patient. Okay. So neuromuscular monitoring is usually done for long duration surgeries. Patients having hepatic failure or renal failure. In patients who are having hepatic failure or renal failure, you go for what? Neuromuscular monitoring. Nowadays, it is done for if any surgery is there, it is lasting for more than 5 hours or 6 hours. We go for this neuromuscular monitoring. In neuromuscular monitoring, what we do, guys, we take an electrode, we keep an electrode. Or, what? Just look over here. We take an electrode, we place an electrode on this part of the hand, and then it is connected to a nerve stimulator. What? Yes. And then we will stimulate the nerve. And then we'll check for the response. So in the neuromuscular monitoring, there are many monitoring used, many monitoring methods used. There is a single twitch method. There is the tetanic stimulation. There is a post-tetanic facilitation. There is a train of four phenomenon. There is a double burst. But the most commonly that is used over here is what? The TOF, the train of four phenomenon, right? So guys, what? Just look over here. While you are placing the electrode, which is the nerve which you are testing for the neuromuscular monitoring, the most common nerve to be tested. What? 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 It is the ulnar nerve. What? What? Question number four. A patient presented with headache, vomiting, and fever. Meningitis was suspected. While performing a lumbar puncture, which is the last structure you will pierce just before entering the lumbar system? Your options are. And the correct answer is arachnoid membrane. Here's the explanation. So the layers that are pierced in spinal anesthesia, starting from the skin, you are at the back of the patient, you are introducing your needle. I'm not telling which needle, just you are introducing your needle. As you are introducing the needle, the first layer to be pierced would be skin, followed by 
subcutaneous tissue followed by supraspinous ligament followed by infraspinous ligament followed by ligamentum flavum ligamentum flavum right ligamentum flavum followed by dura once you puncture the dura you will be in the arachnoid the last layer is arachnoid once you puncture the arachnoid you will be in the subarachnoid space that has csf question number 5 which drug is most likely responsible for the occurrence of hypothermia and muscle rigidity in a patient undergoing surgery while being administered anesthesia with halothane? Your options are And the correct answer is saxamethonium. Here's the explanation. The most common side effect, my homework you have to remember, it is muscle soreness. The second most common side effect is hyperkalemia. The third side effect of scoline use is Right. Is bradycardia. Scoline can cause bradycardia. Just it causes brady. Apart from that, all the things it will increase. It will increase the intracranial pressure, intraocular pressure, and also the BP. Coming to the most dreadful side effects of scoline. Okay. Guys, we are discussing about the side effects of scoline. Right. Coming to the most dreadful side effects. The most dreadful side effect of scoline use is called as malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia. What is meant by malignant hyperthermia? This is very, very important topic, guys. As you go with the name, you can understand. Malignant hyperthermia is abnormally high temperature with sustained muscle contraction. That is called as malignant hyperthermia. Abnormally high temperature with sustained MR. Okay. Now, why does choline cause malignant hyperthermia? And does choline cause malignant hyperthermia in all patients? Does it cause in all patients? No. Scoline will cause malignant hypothermia in autosomal dominant patient. Right? So whenever you give scoline to an autosomal dominant patient, what is happening? These patients will have a receptor called as abnormal rhinotin receptor. What will scoline do? Scoline goes towards this abnormal rhinotin receptor. Imagine this is the receptor. Okay? And if we give scoline to an autosomal dominant patient, this scoline goes towards the abnormal rhinotin receptor, stimulates this receptor. As this receptor is stimulated, it will release calcium. It will release calcium. And that calcium causes severe muscle contraction. Severe muscle contraction. And this muscle contraction starts with what muscle? It starts with the masseter muscle. Thereby, whole body gets involved. The first muscles to be contract over here is masseter muscle. Okay. So, this is regarding the malignant hypothermia. It stimulates the abnormal rhinic receptors in autosomal dominant patient to release calcium that leads to sustained muscle contraction that starts in the masseter muscle there by the whole body gets involved. Now guys, if at all malignant hypothermia is encountered during the case, what are the clinical features that you see in the patient? You will see the temperature is abnormally high. Apart from the temperature high, as the muscles are contracting, the respiratory muscles of the patient gets contracted, leading to what guys? leading to acidosis, respiratory acidosis. The patient might have pulmonary edema. If not managed properly, 
the patient can land up into DIC. What is DIC? Disseminated intravascular coagulation. Disseminated intravascular coagulation. Okay. Now, guys, these are the clinical features of malignant hypothermia. Right. Question number six. What could be the probable reason for the observed result in the capnograph of a patient who is intubated and undergoing controlled ventilation? Your options are and the correct answer is spontaneous respiratory effort. Here's the explanation. Imagine you have intubated a person. The capnograph reading was absolutely going normal. Right? Normal. After 20 to 30 minutes, what you see in this capnograph reading is there is a curar notch developing. There is a notch developing over here. What does it mean? And it is continuing. First, we had first 30 minutes, nothing happened. After that, there was a curar notch developing. Remember, I am talking about this curar notch. Why is it developing? Right? Remember, guys, this is the exhale phase. This is the plateau. In between the plateau, there is one spontaneous breath coming. That curar notch is due to the spontaneous breath. I told you in the start of the case, we gave the muzzle relaxant. Hence, the patient muscles were relaxed. Patient was not at all. There was no effort from the patient. And you were getting this kind of capnograph. But as the case progressed, what happened? The patient slowly developed a spontaneous breathing. Return of spontaneous breathing. Curar notch indicates return of spontaneous breathing. It indicates return of spontaneous breathing. This curar notch indicates the return of spontaneous breathing. There was an MCQ asking that you see a curar notch developing during the case. What is the next step? What is the next step, guys? That means the patient's spontaneous breathing has returned. What will you do? If the surgeon is telling that more half an hour I want, more half an hour it will take me for finishing the surgery. What is the next step, guys? The next step is, come on, guys. The next step is what? You give muscle relaxation. You give a muscle relaxant. Question number 7. A patient is given a nicotinic receptor antagonist as a muscle relaxant. Which drug is given postoperatively to recover from muscle weakness? Your options are. And the correct answer is neostigmine. Here's the explanation. The most commonly used is neostigmine and sugamedic. These are the commonly used reversal agents. Question number 8. What is the mechanism of action of the curia group of muscle relaxants? Your options are. And the correct answer is competitively blocking the binding of H to its receptors. So whenever you give this muscle relaxant, guys, where will it act in the body? Whenever you give this muscle relaxant, they will go towards a membrane, which is called as... Remember, this is the nerve, this is the muscle, okay? And this junction between the nerve and muscle is called as neuromuscular junction. So whenever you give this muscle relaxant, it works on the neuromuscular junction where there will be receptors called as the NM receptor or acetylcholine receptor. These muscle relaxant will basically bind to these receptors and block the NM receptors. Block the NM or acetylcholine receptors. And once the acetylcholine receptors are blocked, what will happen? The muscles will become relaxed. So main function of the muscle relaxant is what? What is the main site? They work on the neuromuscular junction. That is the site. And what they do? They block the acetylcholine receptor. Question number nine. Which of the following inhalation agents has a blood gas partition coefficient similar to nitrous oxide? Your options are. And the correct answer is desflurane. Here's the explanation. Desflurane. Come on guys. Regarding desflurane, you guys can tell me some, a few points. Desflurane. What are the points of desflurane? Sir, desflurane is the 
inhalational agent that is the best used for cardiac surgery but we are not using sir why not using as it requires a costly vaporizer okay costly vaporizer next desflurane is the least metabolized inhalational agent least metabolized inhalational agent in what least metabolized in the liver as it is least metabolized in the liver can you use desflurane for to so desflurane desflurane is the least metabolized inhalational agent in the liver as it has nothing to do with the liver it is the best inhalational agent for liver surgeries and renal surgeries transplantation surgeries okay apart from that desflurane desflurane is the best inhalational agent for cardiac diseases even though it is best it is not the reason is what it requires a special vaporizer right desflurane as it is having a least blood gas coefficient it will have speed onset and recovery hence it was used as a best agent for day care but nowadays what we have noticed is desflurane whenever you give desflurane to the patient it is causing airway irritation it was causing airway irritation sometimes it is causing laryngospasm laryngospasm so instead of des nowadays we are going for sevoflurane for day care surgery okay so as desflurane causes laryngospasm cough salivation and airway irritation okay now guys the best uh, the best agent for cardiac is desflurane desflurane it is the best agent for liver and renal surgeries also don't forget to like and subscribe if you found the video interesting see you in the next one